guys, so it's Cheyenne, and I'm showing you how to make my fluffy whipped shea butter concoction that I use on my hair. You can also use it on your skin. And um, as you can see here, these are all the ingredients that I used. I'll, um, if you have any questions on where I got them from, I'll let you know. But most of these can be gotten from like Whole Foods or even Walmart. The aloe vera gel you can get from Walmart. So let's get into it. So first what you're going to want to do is heat up your shea butter so that you can actually like um, put a spoon in it and get it into the bowl because when you get it, it's really hard. So what I did was I just sat it in a pot with hot water in it and that really made it easy for me to just scoop it out and put it in the bowl. And you really want to have more shea butter in there than any of the other ingredients. And that makes sense because it's a shea butter um, cream or whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, if you want to, you can put more oil. Like right here, I'm putting coconut oil in there. Um, you can put more oil than shea butter, but just know that it's going to be a lot runnier than you might want it to be. Shea butter and coconut oil at room temperature, they are definitely solid. So, um, it looks really runny at first. Ew, there's a hair. It looks really runny at first, but whenever it has time to sit after, you'll see if you decide to make it. Right here, all I'm doing is stirring it with my hand, and I'm doing it pretty fast, trying to get a lot of the clumps out. There aren't too many clumps, but some of the coconut oil isn't completely liquid, and I didn't want it to be liquid. I wanted it to be able to scoop out so I could see it. So what you can just do is take your spoon and mash it on the bottom or on the sides, and that kind of takes care of that problem. See, it's really runny. That's how you want it to be while you're making it, but it won't be like that after. some more shea butter because I wanted it to be thicker and you definitely don't want to use all of the shea butter that you have because if you use all of it and it ends up being too runny then there's nothing you can do about it but if you do it and it's too runny and you still have shea butter you can add some more and that'll help it to firm up and I don't use any measurements I just kind of eyeball it. <laughs> right here I'm putting about 8 pumps of aloe vera gel. You don't have to use that much but I just like having it in there. Right here I'm pouring um, a little bit of olive oil in there. Not too much because I don't want it to end up being super runny. I also don't want it to really smell like olive oil because I don't like the smell of extra virgin olive oil. And you can barely see it right here, I'm sorry, but I'm pouring a little bit of castor oil in it. If you're familiar with castor oil, then you know that it's very thick. And, um, I just like it to be in there because it is a thick oil and it's very moisturizing but I didn't want to put too much in there. You don't have to put it in there. You can use another thick oil of your choice but I just chose castor oil. So you can put it in the refrigerator 
for the freezer, just know that it's going to be pretty hard whenever it comes out of the freezer, so be careful and watch it. And you don't have to use an um, electrical mixer for this recipe. This is, the, I think, the first time that I've used one for it, but it just makes it a little bit easier. You can use your hand, it's not that big of a deal. But if you do have access to one, then I definitely recommend it. And you're probably going to want to do it on your lowest setting if yours is high powered because you don't want it splattering everywhere. Make sure you scrape the sides so you can get all of your product. And as you can see, I'm putting even more shea butter in there because I just really love for mine to be thick and I can't stand runny product. So this is really going to help that out. The thing that I really don't like about the hand mixer is that the shea butter gets all over the little prongs or whatever you want to call them and it's really hard to get it off and I honestly hate wasting any product because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> So make sure that whatever container that you use, you wash it out thoroughly, especially if you used it for a shea butter mixture before, to make sure you get out any bacteria and old product that used to be in there. You know, you want to start it new. And this recipe doesn't have any type of preservative in it, so you really want to make sure that whatever you put it in is secure and that it's not, you know, filled with old product. 